So, one of the most common questions we get is if we can review the cameras of the base versions of the flagships. It kind of makes sense because they're much more affordable and not everyone wants an optical zoom camera alongside a huge screen. I do have one big issue regarding one of my favorite photography modes though and it concerns Apple and their newest iPhone. When the Pixel 7 can do something visibly better at half the price, that's when I start to question what is going on. With the addition of the Galaxy S23, it's time to let the facts speak. Even though the sign says no photos, we like to live on the edge, so we took the risk. It seems to have paid off for the Pixel and the iPhone, albeit with slightly different white balance values. The Galaxy is lacking in detail compared to the other two though, and I honestly don't think it's a small difference, so they will drop a point in the first image. The second one though is the Achilles heel of the Pixel. No sunlight equals darker photos. Not a huge fan of the Galaxy's less detailed photo either, so the iPhone will slowly gain a lead at the beginning of the comparison. The third image is pretty elementary. It happens to be the entrance of Humboldt University in Berlin and it looks pretty nice overall on all of the phones. That's why I decided to pose in front of the gate in the fourth image because I don't want to give out three points all day. I will do it again for the Pixel and the iPhone though as they look really similar in this one. The Galaxy once again is lacking in detail slightly as my face looks too smooth and perfect to be true. The next one is once again a general photo with a nice view of architecture, but this time the iPhone 14 actually brightened up the photo too much. The green tones should be tuned down to capture the neutrality of nature, but it is still overall a nice photo so I'll just remove one point. The Galaxy S23 on the other hand has bigger issues and they're all tied to the same thing I've been repeating over and over again. It reminds me of how I would have to lower the graphics quality of online games because my laptop wasn't good enough. This would lead to things far away looking smooth and similar and that's what we're getting with the new Samsung flagship. The Pixel 7's photo is a good example of what we're looking for with accurate colors and great detail. The sixth image actually looks fine on the side of the S23. It is slightly contrasty, but I like these kinds of photos for Instagram as long as the detail is there. The other two are also good examples of similarly nice photos with the main difference being white balance. The next image will also be three points across the board for all devices and I'm happy to see the Pixel not unnecessarily darkening the photo when the weather is already cloudy as the last image is another very similar one between the Pixel and the iPhone. The Galaxy has removed some textures from my face, leaving them with two points for this one. Well, 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 congratulations to Google and Apple for making it count in the main camera category. Samsung won't be able to keep up as even though I like punchy and vibrant photos, they need to work on not smoothing out facial features as much as they currently do. All right, so we just went through all the wide photos and it's not a surprise that these phones take amazing photos even though they are the base versions. But now it's gonna get a little bit more tricky as ultra wide is next on the list. Let's see how well these cameras hold up. The first image is at the train station. I feel this is an ideal photo for everyone to see the saturation difference between the phones. Don't get me wrong, I like all of them, it's just a detail that I noticed. The second ultra wide image is where the Pixel 7 along with the S23 will grab the three points. The reason is typical, better details in the shadows. If you check out my black jacket, the iPhone 14 has the least detail of them all, but the photo is overall not bad so they'll still take two points. The next one is a good example of HDR or the lack of it. I'm not too enthusiastic about what the ultra wide cameras of iPhones do in terms of dynamic range and I would often see this in comparisons we did with the iPhone 13 as well. While the S23 did a better job in that regard, my face looks way more natural and unfiltered on the Pixel 7 giving it the only 3 points. We'll be seeing the same blown out sky in the next image which also causes my hair to kind of disappear. The iPhone will lose a point here as the last image will be going the way of Google once again. The sky is too blue and dark on the S23 and the shape of my head is pretty warped on the iPhone 14 leaving them with 2 points each. A good performance by the Pixel 7's ultra wide camera will grant it the first place finish as the S23 comes in second. Now it's time to talk about the problem with the iPhone that I mentioned in the intro. The pro versions of their phones have what's called a LiDAR scanner. This enables the phone to create accurate and fast 3D representations of close range objects and environments. The base versions don't have this feature. Laser autofocus like on the S23 Ultra and the Pixel 7 Pro is also really good, but Google is the only one to leave this feature on the base version as well, so hats off to them. This is why the iPhone 14's portrait mode is honestly under 
underperforming due to abysmal edge detection. Look at the area around my head on the first image, and don't be surprised that while Google and Samsung get 3 points each, Apple only gets 1. In the second image, there's a guy behind my ear on the iPhone who is completely unblurred which is an annoying detail. The less aggressive bokeh and sharpness will give the Galaxy 3 points, while the Pixel takes 2. The next image is pretty much a slam dunk with one minor issue. Google's edge detection algorithm is not as advanced as the other two, and that's where you see issues like the small space next to my left arm being unblurred. It's still a nice photo, so we'll get two points as the others get three each. So just for clarification, when I say not as advanced, I'm talking about the highest versions of these flagships. The main reason the iPhone is performing worse is because it doesn't have the LiDAR sensor in the base version, which I'm going to explain at the end of this category, so keep watching. Image number 4 is what I wanted the previous image to be like. They all look fine, so I have no qualms about passing around 3 points each as I move on to number 5. I like the performance that all the devices are showing in these last couple of photos, so full marks over here as well. The next image is bringing back the pain though, as there are a ton of errors on Apple's side. The space between my arm and my body, around my neck, around my left shoulder, it's just too much. Google and Samsung overall perform better here, and I'm going to repeat that comment for image number 7. Once again, the lack of the LiDAR scanner is causing issues for the iPhone 14. The S23's image looks cleaner than the Pixel 7's though, so 3 and 2 points respectively. Last image is a bit too dark on Google's side, and my hair doesn't look the most appealing due to slightly worse quality detection. The other two will get 3 points each. So, the Samsung Galaxy S23 passed with flying colors getting perfect points. Interestingly enough, I'm usually very impressed with what Apple's LiDAR technology can do. In our comparison of the highest tier versions of these phones, this is what we got from the iPhone 14 Pro. Notice how the software applies a shallow depth of field by blurring my arms with the help of the 3D LiDAR sensor understanding the distance between the focused object, which is my face, and my other body parts. This is a common feat that we also enjoyed on the 13 Pro, but it's one that we're missing on the base version of the newest iPhone which caused some issues during the portrait mode category. Regardless, there is one thing that iPhones excel at, even if there's a LiDAR sensor or not. Their videos are almost always bright, crisp, and clean. That's not to say the other two aren't pretty good either, but iPhones are always just slightly better at 4K video. The second video is also really close in quality, but Apple is once again doing a bit better when it comes to things like brightness and clarity, especially when the subject isn't close to the camera. The closer you get, the less the quality difference is apparent, as you will be able to see in the third video. Samsung is on point on this one along with Apple, as Google is a little too dark, losing out on one point. As for shooting videos in 8K, Google doesn't see fit to include this mode in their newest flagship just yet. Maybe we'll see this in the Pixel 8. Interestingly enough, Apple also doesn't think it's necessary to have an 8K mode on their phone, but I'm pretty sure they will also include it soon. Samsung, on the other hand, first showed us 8K on the S20 series. It wasn't that good back then, but they've slowly improved it over the years to achieve this amazing quality we have in the S23 Ultra. Because of improvements to their video quality as well as their 8K, the S23 Ultra is the overall winner here, but I will remind you that if you only shoot 4K, then the iPhone is still going to be slightly better. That being said, there is one more mode that a lot of viewers wanted us to take a look at once again, so why not? Cinematic video, or in other words, portrait video, is usually hands down the best on the iPhone. However, with the lack of a LiDAR sensor, it also does struggle a little. Still, I like how the background blur changes the more I approach the camera, in typical Apple fashion, while it stays the same on the other two. I'll still give the higher ratings to Samsung and Apple, as Google's software needs some catching up to do, which brings us to zoom and also something that I've personally never seen before. There is a 3x optical zoom on the base version of the S23, which is actually amazing. Historically, base versions have had to settle with digital zoom, which is pretty much unusable after the first few levels. However, check out the difference here at 10 times, and also the 30 times of the S23. It will easily take the gold medal in this category, with the Pixel as usual ending above the iPhone due to superior software for zooming. What's next on the list? It's stabilization. No issues with the optical image stabilization while shooting at 4K as they're all fairly stable and smooth, though it might look that Samsung and Apple are ahead by the slightest of margins. The differences are when the active stabilizations are turned on, but even then, it's quite minimal. Try to focus on the top of the frame along with the trees. The iPhone is less jittery than the Galaxy and even lesser than the Pixel, giving them first place here once again. 
With that out of the way, the results from the front camera were more balanced than the time we compared the Pro and the Ultra versions of the same phones in the first photo, but I think the textures of the first camera of the S23 and the 14 Pro are a bit nicer in the second photo. I also prefer the portrait selfies of Google and Samsung, both in terms of skin texture and hair detection, but in the end, I must admit, it's really close and probably going to be based on preference most of the time. The one big difference I see is in the video of the selfie camera as the pixel's quality is faltering when the subject is far away. The color accuracy of the Galaxy is also way off, turning my black jacket into a navy color. No surprise that iPhones are doing the best in videos here as well, as you can see for yourself. It's really close, at least for me, but it seems that the S23 overall takes this, though they all are pretty much equal when it comes to photos. Hey guys, what's up? We're doing an audio test of the base versions of the three phones in our last flagship video. Here we have the Google Pixel 7. It's actually a really good phone, one of the best uh, base phones of Android. And in the middle is the Samsung Galaxy S23, also running the Snapdragon for Galaxy chip. And on the right side, it's the very trusty iPhone 14. It's not the pro version, but we're convinced that it's still a very good phone. The audio of the Pixel just sounds a bit better thanks to the noise cancelling, which the Galaxy also has, but not as good audio quality. The iPhone's lack of noise cancelling is slightly problematic as the audio gets harder to hear in louder environments. In slow motion, there's a lot of noise on the Pixel side in the first photo if you focus on the right side close to where I'm standing. This isn't a consistent problem that we've seen in our comparisons with the Pixel 7 Pro, but it is a problem here in this comparison, so we will obviously pay attention to it. In the second video, everything looks fine with the S23 series having an upgraded 960fps and 1080p, an improvement over the 720p of the S22. I should mention that all the S23 series have a digitally enhanced super slow-mo this year, in comparison to the S22 Ultra being the only one. It still gives you more options to play around with though, so Samsung will win here with the iPhone coming in second due to better video quality without noise. And before I forget, it's important to mention that none of these phones have a macro mode. It's a feature saved for the highest models of the flagships, so I won't be giving out any points here. One trick I can tell you about though is if your phone has an optical zoom and doesn't have a macro mode, you can use that to kind of replicate it, but having software for it usually ends up better. Now that all is said and done, we've got a few more photos and videos for you taken at night time. The first one goes to Google in an easy fashion with Samsung a close second and the iPhone taking third. Should be pretty obvious why. The next image will have Google and Samsung getting 2 out of 3 points each. Both have problems, but the Pixel has great detail in the shadows while the Galaxy looks natural. The iPhone will get only 1 point with a subpar photo, and image number 3 looks really nice on the Pixel side as everything is really crisp and the details are on point. Samsung did better than the iPhone here as well, so they'll take 2 and 1 point respectively. Next image pushed me towards the Pixel at first due to the detail, but because it is kind of desaturated, I think the Galaxy looks nicer overall due to skin tone. And lastly, the overall more balanced photo of the S23 is going to overtake the Pixel 7 and the iPhone 14 as they get 2 points each. With ultra wide, the Pixel does start to perform at a higher level. Even though the sky isn't great, the photo has way more detail than the other two. The iPhone by far has the worst performing ultra wide camera at night, and this is apparent in the second photo as well, with the standings are once again being the same. These same standings won't change for the last photo either, as we see the base Pixel putting up a good performance against the other base models, when it's usually the other way around when the S23 Ultra is in the competition. The iPhone still does manage a better video though, but the Pixel does come in second as the Galaxy's video is overloaded with warm white balance. Interestingly enough, its ultra wide camera takes way better night videos than the other two, as the Pixel had an insane amount of noise, and the iPhone has a lack of stabilization, which is a big problem. Alas, we have arrived at the conclusion of the comparison of the base flagships of Apple, Samsung, and Google. The Pixel and the iPhone were tied in the photo category, as the Pixel took ultra wide with the Galaxy coming in second. Portrait went the way of Samsung along with video, and the cinematic mode was pretty much a tie between them and Apple. The S23 was also the best zoom phone, with stabilization going the way of Apple with a slight difference. Front camera was also really close, but we had to choose a winner, so we went with Samsung. The Pixel's audio was our preference just like the Pro version, with slow motion going to the S23. No macro mode on these devices and the winner of the night category was the Pixel 7, courtesy of having the same wide camera hardware as the 7 Pro. What do you guys think about the results? 
if you were to buy one of these phones, which one would be your choice? Drop a like and a sub, as well as a comment on your thoughts, and we'll make sure to reply. See you around.